Um, anyway, let's get back to the questions here. Let's get back to the questions here. All right. Um, dear Billy, Boston baked bean town balls. All right. So now you know the deal. We, uh, Native Americans taught us some shit with the beans. We, we judged them up a little bit and, uh, and then there you got it. And evidently, uh, you know, I can't wait. Uh, when I go back to Boston in August, you know, I got a gig back. Oh, really Connecticut. I'm going to go back there, you know? Uh, and I'm going to, on Saturday night, if I have a show afterwards, I'm going to eat some Boston baked beans with, uh, some cornbread and a Frankfurter. Uh, Jesus, with a fucking hat with a belt buckle on it. All right. Since it's LGBT pride month, lesbian, gay, bi, translucent. Uh, I just want to say thank you for being an ally. Oh, Jesus. Even if you are a straight, cis, freckled, ginger fuck. (laughs) What the fuck does cis mean? I'm sick of all these fucking words. I need to know what the fuck these things mean. Cis. Sistine Chapel? Oh, Jesus. And of course, it, it's not going to... Denoting or relating to a molecular structure in which two particular atoms or groups... Of the same given plane in the molecule. What? Cis. Okay, I got to look up cisgender. Okay. Cisgender. Denoting or relating to a person whose sense of personality, identity, and gender corresponds with their birth sex. Oh, all right. And why did it sound like an, Why does it always sound like an insult? You're a man who relates to being a man, man. Look at you. You're a woman and you love it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of comfortable with who I am. Uh, even if you are a straight, cis, freckled, ginger fuck. All right, there we go. Uh, it's always great to hear from you as an ally without being all SJW about it. What does that mean? Single Jewish whitey? Say jerk? Which, all uh, right, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up all these fucking words for all you other assholes out there. SJW, definition. What the fuck is with my internet today? Oh, I know why, I'm on the wrong one here. I'm on the wrong one, and now it says, you are not connected to the internet. And then I got to hit refresh, then I have to refresh again, and I got to hit refresh again. And then this is what the old me used to get pissed. And the old me would get pissed. Oh, you fucking, I'm starting to get pissed. I'm not going to lie to you. Come on, you cunt. I guess I'm never going to know here. Well, you know what? You don't need to know everything in life. All right, I'll just, okay. Well, I'm glad I'm not all SJW about it. Sisters without voices. Um, The cancel mob obviously knows nothing about you, so fuck them. It's not a mob. It's a small group of people. It's not even a mob. Thanks again, and happy Pride Month. Don't get a sunburn, you fragile, skinny, pasty cunt. Go fuck yourself. My voice just cracked a cunt. You hurt my feelings, man! Don't get a sunburn, you fragile, skinny, pasty cunt. Go fuck yourself. All right, there you go. See, now there's a gay dude you can hang out with, or a gay woman. You can hang out with that person. You know? That's how you're going to come at me. I'm, I'm really, I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling, feeling the respect. You know, what's fucking hilarious is a few weeks ago when I was really like got down to the last layer of who the fuck I am and really figured myself out to the point it so blew my mind that I sideswiped a fucking mail truck and have to go get my car fixed. I was going like five miles an hour. Those stupid bumpers stick out just a little bit. Those honey baked hams that they have on the side. And it just went right down the side of my car. I was like, oh, God. Over to the body shop. Yeah, you took out the whole side of your car. Everything needs to be replaced. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, just sort of discovered something that I didn't even really kind of like understand about myself. And what is so fucking ironic is I went out to do stand up that night. And I was so fucked up in the head. I messed up my car. And I also fucking didn't even feel like doing stand-up, right? So 
what's crazy about life is like, God, I, you know, I got to block this shit out of my head so I can just go up on stage, be funny or not be too dark and go up there and bum everybody else out, right? And luck would have it, I walk in and the comic on stage is literally joking about the fucking thing that I was thinking about. This fucking shit that happened to me when I was a kid, right? And um, she was making fun of people that, you know, that were in my position. And what cracked me up was I was just, it actually took me out of it because I was like, wait a minute. This is the place where I'm supposed to get offended. To be like, hey, just to let you know, I was in therapy today. Huh? And I didn't. I didn't think that at all. <laughs> I actually got a kick out of it. And then I thought, well, maybe if some more traumatic shit happened to you, you'd be funnier. That's all I thought. I didn't fucking think I'm going to record this and post it and try and ruin this person's fucking career. Why? Because I'm an adult. Because I know I'm at a comedy show and I know that she was just fucking around. All right. Um, so anyways. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you to the person who just wrote in. I know that most people who listen to this fucking park, I know that most people in general understand and go to a comedy show and understand all of this shit. And it's just really just, you know, lazy journalism and all of that, that, you know, you could be a corporation and literally be polluting the ocean while you align yourself with Gandhi in your advertising and you don't get called out. But, you know, if you go up and you do some fucking joke or use a word, then all of a sudden people try and take your career away. Uh, which is just, yeah, is fucking ridiculous. I, I feel like this whole movement should, the whole woke thing should be a look inward, not walking around trying to point at other people so you can get the stink off of yourself. Um, that's all it is. That's why white women now call other white women Karens, that's why hipsters called other hipsters car- uh, hipsters. They're just trying to get it off of them uh, rather than actually doing the work. But that's not what happens. People just say, I'm woke. I'm a woke warrior, whatever the fuck they're saying. It's just like, no, you're just as fucked up as everybody else. You're not as fucked up as somebody in the clan. But does that mean you're a good person because you're not in the clan? Like that's your fucking benchmark. All right. I'm going to go off on a fucking rant here. Let's, let's, let's spin it back around to where the fuck I'm supposed to be talking about here. All right. Late 60s movie. Billy Bastard. Uh, have you rewatched Point Blank with Lee Marvin lately? No. I don't think I've ever seen it. I've, I had never seen it and only saw the poster. I'm 26, so I have some catching up to do. I remember you saying how much you love him, so I've been rewatching a lot of his movies. He's fucking amazing. Yeah, I, and just his voice and he was the real deal, too. I mean, that guy fought in World War II or Korea, one of those fucking wars, and just his whole platoon died except for him and two other guys. Uh, acting is acting, but there's something about lines being delivered from a guy who actually lived it. Yeah, I think comedy is probably the same way. Experience helps the details, uh, and the average viewer can see through the bullshit. Uh, that's also, though, what is amazing about actors who haven't lived it. You know, anybody can kind of play them with self, which is why a lot of times you'll see like, uh, you know, a football player play a football player in a movie. And they're like, hey, that guy was good. It's like true acting is it's that the person's 180 degrees, you know, different than who you are. And you pull it off the accent. The whole fucking thing is is. um and that seems to not get any respect. Anyway, P.S. Never knew who Angie Dickinson was. What a fox. Go fuck yourself. Angie Dickinson. Hang on a second. Let me look that one. Angie Dickinson. Uh, images. That's not the chick from Murder, She Wrote, is it? Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, she is beautiful. Um, all right. What was the other thing I was looking up? The other thing, because I got my internet back. SJW. S-J-W. That's fucking hilarious. It says, I just saw a picture because I was on images. It said, where did the term S-J-W come from? And it shows a white woman with glasses in her eyes, wide open, yelling at what I believe is a white dude with a neck tattoo. (laughs) Oh, social justice warrior. 
Oh my God, that is just such a fucking, it's so, I almost said gay, and then you get in trouble for, it's so douchey. I guess that's why you can't say gay, right? Because you're saying that gay people are douchey. Uh, But gay also used to mean happy. I mean, words evolve, man. I'm fucking with you. Um, All right. The Fall Guy. Are you going to talk about Lee Majors? Another one of my favorites growing up. The Fall Guy. Hey, Bill, been reading about evil leaders in history lately. Oh, Jesus. It's not the TV show. This is the person they put the blame on. Uh, One thing I found uh, after deeper dives is that there's always a group behind the guy that never gets any attention. Absolutely. Whether it's ol- oligarchs, rich people in charge, money people, banking groups, and religious groups, which I found almost always is backed by the former two, it seems like a huge issue when it comes to repeating history's biggest tragedies. Yeah, they always have the Oswald. Uh, I'm not saying Oswald was innocent. Uh, that's what I always thought he meant by, oh, so I'm the patsy. They meant like, I'm walking in here, where's the other guys? Oh, it's just me. Uh, people don't really care about complicated answers because it's just easy to blame the one crazy guy doing all the talking. Hatred is like sports in movies. The public needs a face and a name and a story or it doesn't care. Just like it's easy to feel bad for one person uh, whose tragic story you've heard but not really comprehend 10,000 deaths with individual stories. Yeah, that was Stalin. Yeah, one person is a tragedy, tragedy, one million is a stat. Uh, I bet you think this is a lot in your line of work. I bet you think this a lot in your line of work. A TV show fails and everyone thinks it's the guy who's on the billboard, but in reality, it's some suit who gave a shitty note like lean against the wall and smile at her lovingly. That's the movie poster public, the public wants to see. Thoughts? Thanks for the laughs. Take care. Well, I'll get back to that in a second. I got to make this phone call. Hang on, hang on. It will be half a second in your life. Okay, just like that, I'm back. I am back. What the hell was I talking about? Um, I don't even remember. Oh, the fall guy. Uh, I bet you see a lot of that in your line of work. A TV show fails. Yep, I do see a lot of that. I do. I definitely see. uh, That's kind of how it works. Um. You know, if you win in football, it's, uh, you know, it's all the quarterback. You know, it's not the offense. The offensive line never gets credit. But they also, well, I guess they get blamed if the guy gets sacked a lot. I don't know. I understand what you're saying. Um, And I do find that uh, interesting. And it's also, I think it goes back to this shit now where um, people want these. uh, Oh, I just learned it. What is it? These SJWs come after these cis white males. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'm saying the things. No, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's about putting a face on it and more importantly, not their face. Um, because I think if you're walking around and you think that you are a woke person, you are not being honest with yourself. Basically saying you don't have any issues with anybody. And that's bullshit. And I would tell you to listen to your inner monologue, especially when you're in situations where you feel uh, outnumbered and it's the sun has gone down. You listen to what your inner monologue says to you and you are not woke. Second you get afraid, you'd be surprised what your brain starts thinking. So that's the shit, you know. Everybody needs, I think everybody needs to work on themselves. Everybody. All right, and stop with this fucking bullshit of like, oh, there's the, it's the Scarface. You people, you need someone like me. There, there goes the bad guy. Um, everybody's got a little of that in them, and some people more than others. All right, so anyway, uh, divorce settlement. Dear Justice Burr, recently an athlete celebrity announced a divorce. The celebrity started a company while. Uh, Wait, recently an athlete and celebrity announced a divorce. The celebrity started a company while with the athlete. It is being argued that he deserves half of the company because their money that he made was used to start the business. Uh, Well, I mean, if, if, I mean, that's how business works. Is if somebody like, look, if this is how I look at that, okay? If the celebrity started the business, 
Oh, I see. But wait, but the celebrity had money anyways. Oh, I, I get it. Okay, I almost fucked this up. All right. So if the celebrity had enough money to start the company anyway, then yeah, this is bullshit. It is bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. It's the celebrity's business. Uh, seeing as how in a traditional voice, d- divorce, the wife gets half of what the man makes, even if she didn't partake in the business because she provided moral and emotional support. Hey, that's a crock of shit. Should a man or woman get half of a company that they provided monetary support for? Not a loaded question. Just need a Burr ruling on this. Thanks. And go find yourself, man. Um, this is what I would argue. If that celebrity, if the person's a celebrity, they have enough money to support themselves and they have enough money to start a business. I can tell you this. If I was the athlete, I would say, listen, that's your money. That's your business. Just let me keep my sneaker deal money and all of that shit. All right. And I'll go off and I'll fucking, you know, do whatever the fuck it is. I We both have money. Let's not be assholes, all right? I would just, with them, I would just say, okay, let's sell the house. We'll split that. But I wouldn't, personally speaking, I don't think that you should get into all of, you know, the celebrities building a brand and has like a clothing company or some fucking shit. Like, I I don't agree with that. Um, But what I will say is at least both of those people were working and making money because I will tell you the moral and emotional support is the biggest crock of fucking shit because there's no way to prove that. And you could be a total fucking nag. And also moral and, you know, I'm sitting at home. I don't have a fucking job. You're going off in a coal mine. Give him hell, honey. You can do it. I play canary in a coal mine from the police while uh, I make your breakfast in the morning. And then therefore I should have half your sooty money. I don't agree with it. Um, all right. What I should have said. Oh, this here's a new segment called What I Should Have Said, Everybody. You know those moments in life where you just let somebody walk all over you before you even realize it's happening, and then 10 minutes later, you, you think the thing that you should have said? This is what it is. All right, Donut Dreams. Hello, Bill. I'm a big fan of yours and can't wait to see you when, you're, when you tour through my town this September. I was listening to the May 31st podcast, and I have a story about a time I wish I could go back and tell this donut-baking asshole to, to fuck himself and that is donuts suck. All right, here we go. I was with two of my friends, and we were going to our local donut shop one late night because we had the munchies. At the time, is was eating a lot of peanut butter. Okay, at the time, I was eating a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because I was broke, and they are easy to make. In my altered mood, I was curious what a peanut butter and jelly donut would taste like. So I got all excited. Dude, how fucking high were you? Hey, man. What if you combined a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a donut, man? Uh, So I got all excited. Yep, and you were one with the world. (laughs) And you walked in where this sober cunt was making donuts. Gee, what could go wrong here? So I got all excited about the potential of this store having a donut with jelly and peanut butter. We get to the store, and I start looking over the donuts for something that might have jelly and peanut butter. I see a donut that might have jelly or something, I can't remember exactly what happened, but ask the baker, is that grape jelly? The baker responds, grape jelly? What are you, pregnant? (laughs) I'm sorry, that's fucking hilarious. He goes, that's something my pregnant wife would want. He totally shat all over my donut dream and I didn't know what to say. I was so high I couldn't think of anything to say back. I probably just shrugged and gave a, I don't know, look. But we got our donuts and went on our way. Dude, what you should have done was you should have laughed your ass off and said, sorry, man, I'm high. He's not a cunt, dude. You were fucking high, and that is a hilarious response. Anyways, he goes, I wish I could have said something like, no, I'm not pregnant, you donut baking cunt. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. You never make fun of what a person does for a living. Uh, I learned that the hard way. Uh, I just want a goddamn donut and peanut butter and with peanut butter and jelly. I'm not very good at comebacks, but I never bought any more donuts from this bakery ever again. The worst part is the donuts are actually pretty good. Thanks and go fuck yourself. All right. This is what you need to do. You need to forgive yourself for being that fucking high that you asked for a grape 
jelly donut. All right, you also have to give that give it up for that guy that what he said was fucking hilarious. All right, and I think it's time you go in there and you get you fucking smoke some weed. Go in and go have some more fucking donuts. All right, it was funny. He just made you feel silly. Why did that make you feel so bad? You should have been able to laugh that off. I'm going to say that maybe were your parents mean to you growing up? Were you bullied a lot? Is that what it was? Because that seems like you brought a little bit of baggage in there because that was like, depends on what he said. Grape jelly? What are you, pregnant? I would have fucking fell on the floor laughing. I would have fell on the fucking floor laughing if the guy said that to me. Um, uh, You know, but I don't know. It all depends on how he said it. On defense of you. Because I remember one time when uh, I didn't know anything about drums and I was into Stuart Copeland. And I wanted to buy one of those little cymbals that he had. I came walking into this music store. And I was like, yeah, I want to buy a cymbal. Do you have like one of those little cymbals? You know, they're not like bigger. They're just literally small ones. And the guy just goes, you mean a splash? <laughs> and I was just like, uh, you mean a cunt? It's just like, all right, I'm sorry your band didn't make it. Yeah, Splash. Sorry. This is why you work here. I'm brand new. I'm going to spend money in your store, you cunt. I get it. I know. On You know. Did your friends laugh at you? Is that what it was? What are you, pregnant? That's fucking hilarious. Um, anyway, here we go. Keep going. moving on here. Uh, what I shouldn't have said. Oh, so these turn, this person's turning it on the... Uh, on its ear here. What I shouldn't have said. Dear Billy Burberry ba- handbag. Uh, I am the type of person who rarely says what's on their mind, nor do I do, nor do I stand up to pro- passive aggressive jerks. But one time, 20 years ago, I lashed out and said what was on my mind. I was a senior in high school. I was in my senior year of high school and I just had finished a painting of my girlfriend, Jenna. I was quite proud of it and was excited to share it. In my next class, my friends asked to see it. I happily passed the painting over to my peers where people gathered around to look at it. Oh, God. Yep, you were too young to know where this was going to go. I took in various feedback from feigning interest to genuine compliments. Oh, I thought it was going to get meaner than that. There was a girl in my school who was a deeply unkind person who behaved as if she was God's gift to men. Um, When she saw the painting, she quipped, that doesn't even look like Jenna in her rude, holier-than-thou way she was known for. 99 out of 100 times a comment like that would be internalized and replayed on an endless self-deprecating cycle. Oh, God, dude. I know it. I got a reel-to-reel machine with endless tape in my fucking head. Uh, Anyway, the person says, for some reason this time I saw red and without hesitation, I angrily blurted out, no one asked you, you fucking bitch. (laughs) Oh, my God. I love that. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> she, he goes, the whole class went silent. Her face turned beet red. And I was handed back my painting as I heard someone say, Jesus Christ, Joey. <laughs> I cannot say it was my proudest moment. What are you fucking talking about, dude? If I was the guy that judged you, the fucking God at the end of my life, you're walking into my waiting room to see if you get in heaven and I'm doing the De Niro. Come here, you. Come here, you. Right? He said, I cannot say it was my proudest moment and goes against my desire to be kind to people. Hey, no, 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 no. People have to earn. If you're a good person, you have to, people have to earn that. You just don't give it to them. Uh, anyway, but it has also become a guilty pleasure memory. I like to dig up whenever I'm feeling like a handbag. Dude, fuck that, man. Dude, you, you painted a picture of this woman you were in love with. And she goes, that doesn't even look like Jenna. Okay. No one asked you, you fucking bitch. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's all aces. I, that's nothing guilty about that. I mean, that's that's a fucking triumph. I mean, I, the, I personally, I would watch that clip right in between some NFL films about Super Bowl victories, and, and that at no point would I be like, why was that in there? I would totally see a through line. Kudos to you. 
Uh, anyway, P.S. I love your comedy and think F is for Family is a masterpiece and will be forever and will forever be one of my favorite cartoons. Thank you for being you. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Well, you can thank the great Mike Price, Mark Wilmore, rest his soul, David Richardson, rest his soul, um, Emily Towers, everybody who's written on that thing is the reason why it's that great. Um, all right. Wish I said something. And after this, I'm going to have to wrap this fucker up because I'm going to be late here. Um, wish I'd said something. Hey, Strawberry Short Snake. <laughs> Some really good ones today. Strawberry Short Snake. Uh, you asked for people to write in and ask the time they didn't do anything at the time but wish they had. Uh, Well, I was watching a UFC fight with some friends and we were just drinking beers, cracking joke when a friend of mine, when a friend of my friend says to me randomly, you talk a lot of shit for someone who has never been in a fight. I looked around to see if anyone heard what was said and everyone just ignored it. The guy trains MMA and fights locally and was right. I've never been in a fight. But that's beside the point. It was incredibly fucking rude and it ruined the night. I'm not lying to you when I say I've hung out with this group hundreds of times without incident. He's a relatively new friend of a friend of a friend's I've had for 15 years. I said nothing because I was shocked. I fumed about it for hours and it ruined my night. I have fantasized about things I should have said. Oh, yeah. Beating the shit out of the guy. All that. Everybody's been this person. Uh, I should have said two years later, people act like being the bigger man is the right thing to do, but I don't know. That shit stays with you. I have let it go, and I'm glad I didn't do anything because I have a kid, but your last podcast reminds me of how annoying that was. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, Come back to New England when you can. Um, Yeah, that's that's a douchey thing. Depends on how bad you were talking. If you guys were just like joking around and shit, uh, you know, if he actually trains like MMA, maybe he she should have been the bigger person. I don't know. What can you do? The big thing is you got to like make peace with it. It's the real thing. Yeah, it sucks being called out like that. Uh, that's more getting called out, I feel. You kind of got called out, but you're man enough to say he was right. So I don't think you're a bad person. And... uh I don't know. I mean, what were you going to do? Throw a punch at the guy and then get your ass kicked, but then he'd respect you. Uh, part of watching MMA is to be fucking laughing. And they, oh, you, I mean, I, that's one thing I don't like about commenters on those MMA things. You know, you got knocked the fuck out and all of that type of shit. And it's, I, I just never felt, uh, I don't know. But I guess I do that with hockey, though. I'll talk about people that could beat the shit out of me saying that they were cheap pieces of shit. So I guess we all do it. Yeah, that sucks. It sucks, you know, none of your friends said anything like, hey, man, take it easy. We're just fucking around having fun. He knows he can't beat up these guys. Relax. All right there, Bruce Lee. Hey, if you were any better, wouldn't you be on the fucking, we'd be watching you right now. All right there, strip mall fighter. Um, and then he kicks the shit out of everybody in the room. Um, all right. Underrated living in the past. I have no problem with people who want to watch me TV and dream about a different time. I think it's healthy and can help you happier in the present. I revisit old TV and music all the time and think about summers of old. It makes me happy and I haven't completely lost touch with my life. Bills are paid and the family is happy. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I uh, am going back just watching all these movies that I either saw when I was a kid or never saw. And I just, there's so many little fucking things in there that make me smile. Literally, like, there'll be in a diner and you just see, like, glasses instead of those plastic fucking things, a a, a napkin dispenser, a, a, a kid rides up on a bike, a bike you haven't seen, you know, since you were a kid. Where a kid, you know, in uh, one of those dirty Harry's, these guys go in to rob a liquor store. And first of all, that there's a kid in the liquor store in the movie, which they would never do in today's movies, because what kind of message would that send? And the kid goes to run out of the store when they take out their guns, and this guy grabs the kid and throws him into, into a display. And what I loved about it was he was wearing a numbered shirt. In the 70s, kids used to wear numbered shirts. They had nothing to do 
They had no sports affiliation to them. They just were a numbered shirt. And when I saw that, they just, you know, it made me smile. And also seeing an adult throwing a kid that wasn't his into a display in a store and nobody doing anything about it, regardless of the fact that they had guns, just made me fucking laugh my ass off. So uh, I 100% agree with that. Um, all right. That is the podcast. Uh, go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday.